Oh my gosh, it's already over a year um, since I posted my last padding video. And a lot of you asked for a padding video for the chest area as well. And I've been putting it off <laughs> for a very long while now, but finally it's here. Your chest padding video. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Padding is so important when wearing a kimono, but it's also an often discussed topic. Do you really need padding? Don't you need padding? In which way do you need padding? I think the ultimate answer is that depends on you. <laughs> Today I have tried again to wear my kimono without padding and I honestly have to say when I wear kimono without padding I feel enormously naked although I'm actually wearing three layers but because my fourth layer is actually missing it feels really weird to me. I usually don't wear any padding when I stay at home and I definitely won't go outside but as soon as I go outside I'm definitely putting on padding. That is also the reason why I have two different padding types at home. I have one for casual kimono and I have one for formal kimono. So let's take a look on actually how that looks on your body. And here are my three types. Formal, casual and no padding at all. Let's take a look at each individually. Without padding doesn't look too bad on front and side, but the back was a real struggle. Because the koshihimo was out of control, it kept sliding upwards and I have problems with placing my hem right or straightening the ohashori. The ohashori is not a big matter, especially when you wear uh, otaiko, but the hem is a big meh. With the casual padding, you probably notice that there is a little more volume at the chest area that emphasizes the color, which makes it look like it sits deeper. And my obi actually sits higher. Plus, my ohashori on back is perfectly straight because of the hip padding that I've made in a previous video and you should check that out if you haven't won yet. Now formal padding. The front actually looks like casual padding, but from the side you can tell that my chest sits actually higher because I shaped that new. And when you compare with all three paddings, you can see that with formal padding, the obi sits the highest because I have padded my whole spine, which I usually would never do. But for formal padding, why not? I personally do enjoy very much to change the padding according to the occasion I go to or also according to the kimono I wear. Because the shape of kimono doesn't really ever change but padding gives you the freedom to actually change a few parts of the kimono. And as you could see when you don't wear any padding at all, the kimono will be wrapped around your body and it will always look the same because that's your body shape. And with just changing your body shape a little, you have so much more freedom with playing with the color shape or also where you want to place your OB in general. So I really do enjoy that. So let's jump into my how to make this chest padding. Today I want to recreate this padding. It's one piece. On the back it looks like this. And on the front it has these two strips you put the, together and this is basically your chest padding. And then it has those strips here you bring to the center on both sides. Just bringing one to one side. And it's then hold together like this. This strip is very nice because it also holds your chest a little in place. It's a little like a bra, but actually not. It's very comfortable actually. This actually uses an elastic. I'm not gonna do this in this video. I'm not a big elastic fan because when you wear elastic every single day, at one point it won't stretch anymore. Also this strip on the front is fixed with Velcro. Not a fan of this either. Um, I'm gonna use hooks and eyes for closure. Actually this padding also has on the bottom here, it has a little pocket. Some people need a little padding 
under the chest as well. You could include that if you want that. I don't need it, so I would just skip this whole thing. Just keep in mind if you need padding under your chest as well, you could also include like a little pocket or something. Okay, so that's what we're making today. So let's get started. I have already drafted the pattern, so I only have to put this on my fabric and cut it out. I start with pinning the pattern onto the pre-washed and ironed fabric. Marked it out, so I'll have a guide to sew along. And then I cut it out while adding about one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So this is what I have so far. I have already cut out two pieces and pinned them together. It was a mess because I did not include sewing allowance in my original pattern. When you're downloading this later on my Patreon, be assured that there will be sewing allowance included. <laughs> Should have been included. Anyway, um, now I'm going to sew together those two pieces and I'm gonna leave open, I think from here to here. So I still can include the shoulder padding. So this is the shoulder area. And I'm also gonna leave open 10 centimeter here and here. So I have, um, so I can insert a strip that I'm gonna cut out on the bias that is later holding the whole thing together. You will hopefully see what I mean later. So let's get to the sewing machine. we're finished sewing. Love it. I'm getting better at sewing curves on the machine, which makes me really happy. And I think I did have the wrong needle in the machine without actually noticing. Because the last time I touched my machine, I was sewing Imonuki for my Nagajupan. And I use a thicker needle for that. And um, mm -hmm. so the seam is not very nice, but Whatever. Okay, now I'm going to, I think first, I'm gonna cut out the strip. I'm gonna insert here um, on the bias. To cut this on the bias, I fold the fabric down like so and cut it along the edge. Then I marked out 15 centimeter width and cut two strips that I then sew together to get one long strip. And for this measurement, you actually have to measure your own chest. I won't give you mine. After giving this seam a good press, I folded it in half and pinned it together so I could sew it in place. Then I prepared the main piece by pressing the seam allowance to one side. For the padding, I use quilting cotton made of 100% natural fiber. I cut out as much pieces as I needed and placed them onto the main piece on 
myself. Which is, by the way, really hard to fit by yourself. As it's extremely hard to show how to pad on yourself without actually showing too much, I have my little mannequin here and I have some pieces of fabric from my stash that hopefully will help to visualize where to pad and how to pad. There are just two rules I actually want you to remember for chest padding. The first one is never put anything on your shoulder. Never, never, never. We don't want to have a 80s shoulder padding. In kimono you're always trying to show your shoulders as narrow as you can. Kimonos are actually also made that way that your shoulder will look a little narrower actually. So never put anything on your shoulder. If you start padding, you start padding from here. And how much padding you actually need here depends on your body shape. So first of all, usually pad, you would start padding from here. The next rule is never put padding on your chest. It depends, of course, where your chest is actually placed. Usually when you don't wear a bra, um, the chest usually tends to go to the side. So never pad on the side. Always pad to the center. So I'm trying to bring it up here. You know what? I need, I need a few pins to actually pin this in place. I need pins. <laughs> we are back. Okay, so we start pinning. I start padding here. Oops, this, this was a pin. This is the first time in life I wish I, wish I would have one of those pin cushions here. <laughs> and never pin to the side, so I'm trying to keep it in the center. These are the biggest two rules you would have to remember. And how much you're gonna pad here, and how, um, in, in which way you're actually gonna pad here, and how long you're gonna pad here, that actually depends on your body shape. You will have to find that out by yourself. Um, that's why I usually want to give into uh, individual sessions, because then I can tell everybody what would work. And on the other way up, you exactly pad the same way. This is actually too long. I could fold it up. <laughs> I'm not doing that. And then I have another padding going the exact same way on the other side here. Not padding the shoulders and trying to bring it to the center. Not padding here on the chest. This is how padding should look like. I marked out where to place the padding on the inside of the main piece. And after turning it inside out, I inserted the padding through the opening I have left. and try to smooth it out as good as I could. Second day, because um, it was too dark to film yesterday, so I didn't finish it off, because I want you to follow along the process, yay. Super easy kimono outfit today, because I just came off my kimono lesson with Liana, who's definitely watching. <laughs> okay, um, what I have to do now is to close all the parts I left open and I have to stitch down the padding we have inserted here. And what I have been taught to do is 
sewing the padding down with huge basting stitches and I was not a fan honestly um, I'm still using my Hosei but I'm actually washing it and like once a month about once a month I'm washing it and like the big basting stitches just disappeared and I had to restitch it and then I just became lazy and pin it down with a safety pin <laughs> um, so I don't like that so I thought I'm gonna try to kind of quilt it down with um, the sewing machine I don't have a quilting foot for my machine or something I'm just gonna sew it down by machine and I would love to be a little more artistic with this but I'm not <laughs> so I, I'm still not sure how I'm gonna sew this down but just gonna some way probably just once in the center to hold all the layers here in place and not to leave uh, to lose too much of the fluffiness we're gonna see after washing it a few times um, how this will stay in place so this is probably a future video <laughs> probably with the title remaking all my kimono penny <laughs> we'll see so um, yeah that's what I'm doing now and um, then also I'm gonna insert why is this so dirty um, I'm gonna insert um, the front piece and gonna sew some, some hooks and eyes on it because I'm not a velcro fan and then we're basically done here is definitely an unknown fact about me I love watching quilting videos on YouTube, although I'm not a quilter, because those videos are super satisfying. And I used a few tricks that I picked up watching said. And one of those tricks is before you start quilting on your machine, it's good to pick up the bobbin thread to the top. So it won't crumple and not up on the bottom. So that's what I did and I just started sewing. And after that was done and everything was ironed down, I inserted the strip that will close up the front. And I decided to sew it in place with Unshin because this will make it easier to make changes later and it will also provide a little more flexibility than machine stitching. Instead of Velcro, I hate Velcro, I used hooks and eyes for closure on the front part. In this video, this is only a few seconds, but in real life, this took me three hours to measure, fit, and sew it on correctly, <laughs> but <laughs> And without calculating the hooks and eyes, this actually took me only like two hours, but she was finally complete. And this is also footage from just today because I already wore her for the past four days and she's so comfy. I love her so much. I am totally happy how my chest padding actually turned out. It's, um, it was really definitely necessary to finally remake my old chest padding because I don't even want to show it to the camera. 
that's how gross it already is. Um, I'm very happy that I actually only used natural fibers for this project and I took a while in the fabric store to actually settle on a fabric I like because I really wanted to have it lightweight. While I filmed this video and got changed and changed the padding, I already felt that there is a difference in weight. So I thought, why not actually weighing it? And look how different my paddings are. So this is my formal padding. It's 268 gram. Next up is my old casual padding, which is 221 gram. And last but not least is the padding I've made in this video. It's 135 gram. That's already 100 gram difference. <laughs> So now I have actually proved that my new padding is actually lighter than my old padding is. And it's, it's so awesome. <laughs> I don't want to take it off at all. <laughs> I was so with my little experiment of sewing um, the padding down in the middle, like a little quilt, I would say. Um, it's definitely better than sewing it down with big basting stitches. I feel it's better in place. So we'll see how long this will actually keep shape with washing it. I am already prepared to actually remake it because I have never been working with quilting cotton itself. Um, so that's actually also still on the experiment side. Right now I'm very happy with how this turned out. Thank you so much for being patient with me and waiting for this video. I tend to put off um, videos when I'm not sure actually how to explain or how to visualize different things. I hope it turned out pretty well and yeah, um, kimono padding is definitely one of my favorite topics about kimono because I think it helps a lot when styling somebody else or even when you want to change your own style. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would be really happy when you liked it or even shared it and leave a comment down below. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, I would be very happy if you'd subscribe. And yeah, I think I talk to you in my next video. Bye. <laughs> Hi, it's me again. Now I did not forget that I have actually to pick a winner from my giveaway that I announced in my last video. So these are all the entries. Thank you so much. It's quite a lot. It was so much fun to scroll through all of your outfits. And I may have revolved a few of you because I simply just liked your um, account so much. Um, so let's pick a winner. This usually makes me, makes me super nervous. <laughs> Just that you know, I appreciate your support very much. And if you're this time not the winner, I want to thank you so much for your entry. And it really meant a lot to me, especially because this obi is going into a very nice home. I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> I loved your name, by the way, when I wrote it down. Le Wild Geek. I totally remember your post as well. I think it was a great, a great ish kimono, wasn't it? Loved it very much. Thank you so much for your entry. I am going to send you a message on Instagram um, later today, which means when this video is coming out. <laughs> and yeah, you will have to send me your address back so I can send you this. And if they won't, um, we will have to pick a new winner, which will be probably a live stream or something. But I'm pretty sure um, they're going to tell me their address. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your entries. And yeah, keep up all the kimono vibes. And I should just say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>